Welcome back. You're watching the Jacksonville History Show, produced by the Jacksonville Historical Society and the University of North Florida's Communications Department. I'm Harry Reagan. Our guest is one of the pioneers in uh, aviation, uh, Joe Hotwing Tillman, president of the Buffalo Soldiers Historical Society. Welcome. Thank you for having me, and I want to clarify, uh, the closest I got to an airplane is when I was in the Army waiting on it to land. <laughs> okay. Yes. So, but, but you're in the same era, but uh, Army, not uh, Air Force. Yes, huh? sir. Yes, sir. And uh, so, uh, how come hot wing? <laughs> Hot wing uh, was earned by two things. My uh, motorcycle is a gold wing that I ride, mm -hmm. and I added some pipes to it, and it so didn't sound like a normal gold wing, so some of the gentlemen was con was stating that the motor was a little hot. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is I love hot wings. We travel out of town, and I'm asked the question, what do you want to eat? And if they hesitate, we're going to get some hot wings. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, and tell us a little bit about the... Uh, Buffalo Soldiers Historical Society. Yes, sir. The Buffalo Soldiers Historical Society was established in November 2006. Uh, the, reason, the purpose of it is to educate the general public on all African-American military history from the 1800s to 1951. The passion for me, what got me involved in, in, in even uh, pursuing this, is I was part of the Jacksonville integration uh, system, fifth grade, going to Forest Hill Elementary. And one of the things my classmate, who was a friend of mine, said, well, Joe, you were only slaves. Y'all were only slaves. The sad part about it is I didn't really have anything to point to in, in the history books we were learning from. So that started my desire mm -hmm. to learn and to get uh, more informed. And then I found out I do, do have a lot of heroes that just, not hap just don't happen to be in our history books. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're, uh, w w tell, tell us a little bit about Buffalo Soldiers. For the, people who don't know. Yes, sir. The Buffalo Soldiers were, was after the Civil War. They mm -hmm. were your first African-American military unit authorized by Congress in, on July 28, 1866. Now, Congress authorized two cavalry units, and that was the 9th and 10th Cavalry, and four infantry units, the 38th, 39th, 40th, and 41st Infantry Regiment. Approximately two years later, Congress combined those four infantry units into two infantry regiments, which became the 24th and the 25th Infantry Regiment. Now, the 38th, one of their claims of fame is that they had the only female to ever serve as a Buffalo soldier. Her name was Kathy Williams. She flipped it to Williams Kathy, served for two years. Uh, documentation about her? Oh, yes. Yes, there's plenty of, uh, you Google Kathy Williams, her name will come up. Interesting thing is that she did not get her pension because fraudulent enlistment. Um, sad thing about it, Molly Hatchett, who never served a day in the military, did receive a pension, mm -hmm. but she was not able to, even though she served with honor and distinction. Uh, I'm infantry retired, and so I know what it takes to put a rucksack on your back and walk <laughs> a few miles. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm, I'm definitely proud of the service she gave to the country and the things that she commit, she uh, was able to do, not only during after the Civil War, but she served during the Civil War as well. How long after that was it before uh, women could legitimately uh, serve in uniform and not have to do it? Uh, not have to fake it. <laughs> well, that kind of ties back to Florida because it was Mary McLeod Methune who um, talked to her friend, Eleanor Roosevelt. Uh. And it was her relationship with Eleanor Roosevelt that got, uh, that helped push the uh, envelope to allow women to join the service. Not only that, it was Eleanor, it was, uh, um, excuse me, Mary McLeod Methune conversation which got the money so that pot black pilots can go to HBCUs, historically black universities. Mm -hmm. The funding came through this conversation between Mary McLeod Methune and Eleanor Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. And that's how we ended up with the Tuskegee Airmen. And uh, tell us some more about uh, things that we probably don't know about uh, this part of our history. Uh, yes, sir. If you go back in before the continent was called the United States of America, there were people of color participating in conflicts. Mm -hmm. When you go into the uh, the American Revolution, you, you had people of color. It wasn't just Christmas addicts at that time, even though the history book is written that way. You had regiments that fought uh, against the British. Prior to that, you had regiments that fought to free the slaves before 
the uh, revolution ever begun. Then when you get into the Civil War, the United States col colored troops, one of them was stationed right here in Jacksonville. The famous uh, 54th uh, Massachusetts was here in Jacksonville. And that movie that you see, Glory, is based on that unit that was located here. And they have some of their military um, men that served as buried right on JU's campus. And your historical society is uh, trying to uh, preserve this part of our history. Yes, sir. Uh, collecting any kind of archival materials? Yes, sir. Collecting archive material, and we present an exhibit every year at the main library downtown on the floor, fourth floor, mm -hmm. and it lasts for a month. So mm -hmm. we open it up the first week of June this in 2016, and it will stay open until the second weekend of July. Mm -hmm. And it promotes that history that um, we talk, and we cover all branches of service, not just the, as our name is the Buffalo Soldiers, but our mission covers all branches of service to include the Merchant Marines. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah, the Buffalo Soldiers didn't, uh, do any flying. <laughs> Not at no. all. <laughs> um, but as you say that it was the Buffalo Soldier that brought forth the commander, mm -hmm. which we know as, uh, as, as Benjamin O. Davis Jr., mm -hmm. it was Benjamin O. Davis Sr. who was a Buffalo Soldier that brought him, that, mm -hmm. that birthed the man. And you mentioned that uh, when you were going to school, um, you didn't get uh, a complete picture yes, sir. of uh, American history. What do, you, what do you have any idea? Has that been largely corrected now? Or? The history books are basically the same as they were when you and I were in school uh, and when it comes to telling the whole history. And when I'm talking with the kids, I take things like, say, for instance, Teddy Roosevelt charge up San Juan Hill, Teddy Roosevelt and the Rough Riders. Mm -hmm. Well, I show them that it was actually the Buffalo Soldiers was the main fighting force that went up San Juan Hill, and Teddy Roosevelt was on Kettle Hill and came over to San Juan. And out of his Rough Riders, Teddy Roosevelt was the only one that had military experience the rest of the Rough Riders were polo pony experts. So we, we showed the difference. We showed them that in the history books when the Pony Express ran, and we see that in the history books. It's not about, it doesn't talk about the Buffalo Soldiers who actually delivered the mail longer than the Pony Express. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess it's up to uh, organizations like the Buffalo Soldiers Historical Society to uh, help complete the picture of American history. Yes, sir, it is, and it, and it brings self-esteem and awareness, and it's not a, quote, black uh, history program. It's an American history program talking about American fact, history mm -hmm. facts, mm -hmm. and that's what we like to do. Joe Hotwing Tillman. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for being with us, and uh, yeah, that's our show. For more information, visit the Jacksonville Historical Society's website, jackshistory.org, or call 665-0064. And for now, we're history. <laughs>